welcome friends to this holiday party we are going to have singing and dancing <laughs> see i got a better applause now than to my normal talk <laughs> there is a stanza a verse in swami ji's book Sir Chidyal Singh Swami Ji, Sir Radha Swami Faith in Agra, which says, "Sant Diwali nit kare sat lok ke mahi." Diwali is a big festival in India, holiday festival, and it says that the saints celebrate their holiday in the true land, in Sachkhand. Saints do not celebrate it just outside. every day is a holiday for them we sometimes think they are very busy people they are having holiday day and night they are spending their time mostly in the awareness of their true home where they take us that true home is their normal place of awareness all the time it's very difficult for us ordinary human beings to understand that when we meet these perfect living masters these enlightened saints they look absolutely ordinary human to us but they are living at all points of creation at the same time not that they have attained something and come back to tell us which many people have done there are so many people who get an enlightened vision they see some great visions and they come back and tell us about the visions they had but the perfect living masters do not see vision and come they are there even when they are talking to us at the physical plane it's a very unique thing that is why we cannot understand that they are celebrating their holiday all the time anyway we are not like them so we have to celebrate it over here so our singing and rejoicing is to take advantage of the music that exists music is very fundamental to human beings it is so fundamental that if we do not have music our life becomes barren we have some music or the other all the time every religion creates music every religion creates special sounds so that we can get entertained holidays are celebrated with music why is that the reason is that we in our internal form as souls are made up of music it's amazing how can music which is just a sound be ourself it's not exactly ourself because it's different kind of music it's a creative vibration a creative force that can create things and because it creates with great vibrations frequencies and also on a different levels therefore at this level where we are sitting now it turns out to be like music can you imagine we talk of the soul sitting inside and the soul can be heard it's audible how can the soul be audible and can be heard if it's not music if it's not sound therefore the description of the ultimate reality of our own as something audible has been recorded by all the enlightened people in the world and every religion mentions it we we don't notice it so easily that the fact that our self is audible to us at physical plane is a huge thing John says in the opening verses of his gospel in the Bible in the beginning was the word and the word was with god and the word was god adds on nothing was made that was not made by that you will see why use this particular word word what is word how can word be god how can word be the creative power of the whole universe only because the word meant what can be heard by us 
Do you know word could not be written at one time long ago, but could be heard by everybody. Lot of languages, written languages, scripts came later, but the word could always be heard. It's audible. Therefore, they said the creative power is word. Rig Veda, the oldest scripture in India, out of the four Vedas, Rig Veda deals with the spiritual evolution of this universe. It says, in the beginning was the nod. Nod meaning the sound coming. And everything was created by that. Almost a translation of the same verse. We talk of the other religions, talking of the music of the spheres, talking of the kalma and the bhagyas, mani, the sound coming from the sky. Everyone is mentioning that. And now we go to church and we sing. We go to temple, we ring bells and sing. We, we are using music every place of worship. The secret lies in the fact that our own self is music. When people become artists, it's the music in them ringing and creating the art out of them. It's the inner inspiration. All inspiration comes from the higher self, which is inside us in the form of a music. Now, the best thing is, and this is what the, I like the most, that the music can be heard by any one of us. The only requirement is don't hear the music outside, hear the music inside. That's it. The music inside can be heard when you put your attention inside. I mentioned yesterday, put your attention inside, you can withdraw attention, even become a different body of yours, the body consisting only of sense perceptions, no matter, no physical matter. You can do that. And if you can hear the music, you'll do that very fast. We also use music. Actually, the word in some of the scriptures has been used as Shabd. Shabd, Shabd has been used. It's equivalent of word. This is Shabd, is a word. Now, when we say Shabd, what is the Shabd? According to the holy Sri Guru Granth Sahib of the Sikh tradition, they say Shabde Dharti, Shabde Akash, Shabde Shabad Bhaya Prakash. They say that Shabd created this whole universe. Almost translation that the word is God and creates everything. So clearly. But then it also refers to a Shabd that has been there forever. They also refer to as Bani, which also means something that can be heard. You hear the Bani. In the Sikh tradition, they think the reading of the scriptures is Bani being read, that the scriptures are Bani. That's not what the scripture is saying. What's the scripture saying? Bani vajji chaun chugi sacho sach sunai. All the four yugas, the Bani has been ringing. But Sri Guru Granth Sahib, the scripture was only made by the fifth, fifth Guru, Sri Guru Arjun Dev, much later. But the Sri Guru Granth Sahib says that the Bani I talk of has been there in all the yugas. And this is the creative power. I can give you so many references from all the religions that they are referring to something that is so important. It's there all the time. It's the basic thing. And whether you call it the vibration of the universe, whether you call it the frequency of the universe, whether you call it the song of the universe, it's there all over and nothing is being created without that. And yet it is our own self that is creating. The best thing is to hear the song of your own self, the sound of your own self. It can be heard. People want to close their ears and hear. Right now, you are listening to me speaking. That's also listening. But this listening is a little different from the listening inside. What's the difference? I am using words. I'm speaking in English. Sometimes in the middle, I speak other languages. I quote in Punjabi or some other languages. So these are languages. When we speak in language, 
it is also spoken language and a sound and a word audible if i did not speak to you you wouldn't even get the message so our spiritual path starts with the word starts with the shabd starts with the sound but it starts first with language which is a spoken and written word spoken and written word in our indian tradition is called varanatmak shabd varanatmak shabd means that which can be verbal which can be expressed by language in writing or in speech i am using it right now you are all using it to co- communicate with each other so the starting point is varanatmak shabd but if you put your attention inside you will find it becomes a not a spoken language but a music which you can understand no matter what your language is so we change this nomenclature that when we hear the sound inside you start sometimes with varanatmak which is sometimes called repetition of a mantra or doing simran what is simran or repetition another language word spoken inside so you carry your varanatmak now you carry the spoken language inside and then you move on to the music already coming inside which then is just music so we change the term dhon atmak dhon is a continuous tone dhon is music dhon is a sound that can be heard therefore when the dhon atmak sound is heard it can be many kinds people who meditate hear sounds they come and tell me we are hearing sounds like like, like little cricket chirping we are hearing sound like little bells we hearing sounds of a roaring thunder we hear sound like a train passing we hear different sounds there are lots of sounds one can hear there's always some sound around us there's no place without sound i can tell you you go anywhere in the world you will have sound a japanese zen master once told me that he has been able to design a small little glass globe which is soundproof he said i want to sit in complete silence where there is no sound at all i said i have never been able to find such a place if you have found one i'd like to visit too he has an ashram about 30 40 miles away from tokyo in japan i visited it and i saw a big glass dome transparent and it's made soundproof just for the breathing a tube brings air with minimum sound so that it cannot be heard by the human ear so he says that is the soundproof i said i like to sit in it when i sat in that i heard my heart beat i'd never heard before <laughs> i could hear my breathing i never heard before so clearly i realize there so many sounds inside the physical body that you hear if you is complete silence but the sound that is inside can be heard in when you think it's complete silence there is no complete silence anywhere the sound of the self pervades now when you use these spoken mantras and so on and are able to hear the sound inside and leave the mantras they have done their job they taken you to the sound of the self mantras only work that far it's not to go very far sometime people think mantras repetition of mantra repetition of word will take us to our true home how can spoken word which are physical words take us anywhere beyond one step just little sound of the self can be heard by repetition of words by singing songs outside inside you can't go far that is why the inner sound which you hear which varies but uh, in the several sounds you hear inside if you play with them let me hear this one more this one this they're different this one looks very close to me this one looks far away from me when you play with those songs you find a sound that's coming from a distance and like a big bell ringing tong tong far off but like a big bell ringing it's weak 
because the sounds are closer to us, they are loud. If we don't pay attention, we can be just listening to the regular sounds, which mean nothing. They're just sounds. And we can just get tired and just say, it was no use. But if you are careful and put your attention on that weak sound, which is say to be coming from a distance, but resembles a bell, put your attention, the bell sound becomes louder. And suddenly you find it is different from the other sounds. Apart from the fact it is completely melodious, it's got a melody of its own. It has a pull that makes you feel that you are losing your body awareness. The very thing that you want to do with meditation by doing different kind of exercises to get out of body experience, that one sound, if you hear the sound of the big bell inside, it will draw your body consciousness out in no time. It all, some people get frightened. I have heard stories, people get frightened, they feel they are dying just by the pull of the sound. You don't die, everything is normal. Your vital force functions completely normal in this body. But the sound is pulling your attention away from the body to your inner body. The sound is coming from yourself. So the sound of the bell, if you continue to listen, the peal of the bell, like it's dong, dong, they become longer, dong. Then become so long, it just remains a peal. So it doesn't look like a bell after that. It looks like one continuous tone. Sometimes, some people directly jump into the continuous tone also. It has a pull. Now this attention put on the sound is the fastest way to discover yourself. People haven't tried it. If you can put your attention as fully as possible on the sound of your own self that resembles a bell sound or the peal of a bell sound, you will be pulled inside to your higher awareness faster than any other method I have tried. And I have tried several methods. Several yoga, yogic exercises I have performed to get that result. Nothing is faster than this. That is why this particular yoga, yoga means union with your true self. Discovery of your true self is the word yoga, yoga. So this particular yoga was taught to me by Hazur Maharaj Baba Savan Singh, great master picture you see here. And it's called Surt Shabd Yoga. What does it mean? Surt is attention, Shabd is sound, yoga means union. Put your attention on the sound, and you will get there. So I am mentioning to you this simple device because it has gone a long way in my own life. It's gone a long way in the lives of many people. The discovery of yourself is faster when you can hear the melody of your own self. That sound does not come from any side. Some people have told me, we have been advised by our gurus or masters Listen to this sound from the right ear because right ear is dial positive and left ear is call negative. First of all, I, I tell you this whole world is call. This whole world is negative. Not only this world is negative, the inner astral world is also negative. Not only astral world, even the causal world where the creation is taking place is negative. It's all in the domain of time and space. Kal people don't realize the word Kal translates into time. Kal doesn't mean a, a huge being sitting there controlling us. What is controlling us is the flow of time. We are captured and imprisoned by the flow of time. If there was no time, we would be free. Time is creating the events of our life. Time is creating birth and death. Time is creating every event. Time is call. Time is a negative power. It's all negative here. Only when we go beyond the mind, we go into real positive territory. Our own place is above the mind. So therefore, to divide into left and right, this was, they totally forgotten why it was suggested by some masters. It was suggested for the simple reason 
that we are st starting with a physical brain, physical head, and the right side, the head is more intuitive, left side is more rational, and therefore more thoughts come from the left side, more intuition comes from the right side, therefore they said listen to the right. It's a very simple thing to start with. It was not that the sound, real sound comes from either right ear or left. It doesn't come from any ear at all. It comes from where you are. And in the wakeful state, you are behind the eyes, in the center, and not on either ear. You are not anywhere near any ear. Ears are merely devices to listen and put the sound inside. It is not meant for locating you. You are located at the third eye center, behind the two eyes, exactly in the center. That's where the sound comes from. When you hear the sound and becomes loud enough, you'll find it is like a surround sound. That's, you can hear it on all the sides. Why do you hear it all the sounds, all the sides? Because it's coming from you. That's why you can hear it all the sides. It's not coming from any outside. It's coming from within you. Therefore, it looks like it's surrounding you, like you are having a shower in sound, beautiful sound, very great melody. You enjoy it. That's the most enjoyable part in early part of meditation. But it can take you fast. I'm sharing this information with you because many people miss this. People are thinking we have tinnitus because we have a problem in the ear. Tinnitus is different. Your tinnitus can also sound like a bell sound, like a short bell sound, but it is hurtful. It's not pleasant. It is So don't mix up the two. The sound that is pleasant doesn't bother you. It comes from the center. It's not tinnitus. It cannot be. But we all have it. It's not some unique people who have it. We all have it. Put your attention there and listen. I tell you, that will be a great celebration and a great holiday for you. If you can hear the sound, you can hear it every day and celebrate these holidays every day. The saints do it. The enlightened people do it. Why not us? We have been given the same gifts by the Creator which have been given to these perfect living masters, given to these saints. Same gifts have been given to us. What are those gifts? The Creator has placed Himself inside us. The whole creation has been placed inside us. And we have been given the means to open up and see the secrets of this universe. What greater gift can you expect? We have been all given the best presents that we can get. We exchange holiday presents. We give gifts. Imagine what great gifts we have got. How much thankful we can be to be human and to have the ability to find the truth of everything inside us. The best gift, the best Christmas and best holiday, best New Year gift that we can get are given to us already inside. Celebrate every day. Celebrate every year. Celebrate all your life. Celebrate and enjoy the holiday all the time. That's my wish for you today. So you got the great gifts already. I don't have to give you any more presents. <laughs> no, maybe I can. We give presents to each other. It's a good thing. People feel happy. But not everybody feels happy. And that is the sad part of it. It makes me sad to meet friends who say, Oh, Christmas has come again. I have to go and get the presents for these people. And I don't know. Time is very short. I don't have enough left on my credit card. How will I manage? He's suffering the holidays. Instead of enjoying the holidays, a person is suffering because of a tradition of gift giving. The gift giving is not becoming a celebration, it's becoming troublesome that we don't have the means. Oh, I will give the same gifts. I may not, I may not have to bother about the gifts. Can you imagine people get so depressed sometimes in these holidays? The records show that every year in this country, the suicide rate increases during the holidays more people commit suicide and die because they have no one to celebrate the holiday with. What a tradition we have created that the holiday, which is supposed to be a celebration, supposed to be make you happy, the celebration of happiness should be turned into a reason for killing yourself and dying. 
there is a problem. Now if you look at the problem, what is the problem? Why are people doing this? We are alone. How will you celebrate? And I am telling a method you celebrate more when you are alone. Celebrate inside. And if by chance you are initiated by a perfect living master, the master sitting inside you, celebrate with that master. Go inside. You will have a great celebration. You are never alone. Ever since I got initiated, I have never been alone at all. Not for a second. There was my mother-in-law. Once she told me, I do tell my master to keep out when I am in the bathroom. <laughs> I, I know he's always with me. But there are some moments when I want my own privacy. I am only telling you that initiation gives us a companion, a friend, a real friend, a friend who loves us all the time, 24-7, gives us that friend forever. How can we be lonely? No person who has that friendship can ever commit suicide or even think of that. We'll always be high in happiness. We have been given these gifts. You should enjoy those gifts. But loneliness prevails. People have friends, are married, children, families. They commit suicide out of loneliness. How can a person be lonely with so many people around? The loneliness is not coming from the people around or not having people around. Loneliness is coming. Nobody understands us. We are alone. We can't, nobody, our relationships are skin deep. Nobody really knows who we are. Therefore, we are lonely. In that sense, we are all lonely. We are lonely because thoughts come into our head, seeking comes into our head, feelings come into our head, and we feel so many things. Who do we share with? Who can we trust so much? We were betrayed by so many people. We lost all faith in humanity because so many people betrayed us. Our lives are full of betrayal, full of lies, hypocrisy, cheating. That's what we have experienced. If that's our experience, it's such a general experience, how can we be in company of anybody? How can we be in such company that we trust 100%? We all have something to share. And it only helps us if we can share with somebody and there's nobody we can trust to share those things with. No, no, no wonder we are all lonely. This loneliness that comes inside us, I've tried to find what cures we can find for this loneliness. I cannot find a better cure than the friendship and love of a perfect living master. We can share everything with the perfect living master. We can share outside and inside. That takes care of loneliness forever. And if you have cured that, your life takes a big turn into happiness, not only on a holiday, every day. That is why it's so big an event. I mentioned to you yesterday, that initiation by a perfect living master means something very different from what people think it is. People think initiation means how to learn, how to meditate and go in. That is not initiation. Initiation takes place when a perfect living master with the awareness of totality, sitting in a human body, says, I am your friend. Initiation is complete. The rest is a formality because for our mind. Soul does not want to meditate, nor does it need meditation. Mind needs it. Mind feels nothing can be achieved without my effort. Therefore, it must have something to do to get results. Therefore, the meditation has become essential for us because we are relying so much on our mind. The soul only likes love. Soul is affected by love. Soul wants love, period. And the mind wants lots of things. Mind has enlarged the list of things it wants. Every day it adds more items to that list. This is my bucket list. I am going to add more things in my bucket. 
Every day we want more and more. More of what? More of that which is going to stay here and never go with us. Can't you imagine that what the mind is asking for and collecting every day? I go to periods, some, sometimes I go to somebody's house, see so much clutter of things there. And I say, why are you collecting all this stuff here? It's too much. No, 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 we love them. We, you know, I like these things. I love these things. Okay. Do you know that you will not carry it with you? Your elderly lady, full of this, you're still going and buying things. Why am I saying I go to houses? I'm talking of my own house. <laughs> <laughs> so much stuff. So much stuff we gather. Some packed up and never opened even. And who is going to carry it? When we pass on, nothing comes to us. All that happens by this collection, let me tell you very frankly, all that happens by this big collection of things that we have around us is when we die, we say, oh, we can't carry them with us. We have to come back. And reincarnation becomes a certainty. We are tying ourselves back by collecting these things. We are making sure that we keep on going round and round in the cycle of birth and death by creating objects to which we get attached, thinking they're ours. This is mine. When you say this is mine, you get attached to it. And then if you can't take it, you miss it. When you miss it, you come back. It's normal. A friend of mine was living at a distance and he said, Ishwar, I want to come to your program. But this time I cannot come because I have decided to buy a chair. This is a beautiful chair. It's cost $800. I don't have the money. I had kept $200 to visit you, but I have placed that on a layover. That means when I complete paying, they'll give the chair to me. So I paid $200 already. I said, that's okay. The chair is more important. That's all right. Everybody has their own ideas of priorities, what is more important. That chair happens to be a very unique, special chair. Certainly it can be more important than my regular talks, which are just repetitions. <laughs> After some time, next event happened. He said, I had to put another $200 on that chair because I said I have to pay that. So sorry, I missed your next program also. I said, that's all right. It shows further importance of the chair. Then he put another $200, third installment, and he had to put one more installment, and he died. Never got the chair, never attended my program. What happened? What do you think can happen to that person now? There is no way he can escape rebirth just for the sake of a chair. One chair can pull us back because it's not only that he liked the chair, he made an investment on it. It's my chair, it's left behind. And this is good enough for the negative power that runs this universe. Okay, go back, get the chair. <laughs> and you come back. Can you imagine how much we ruin our chances of escaping this negativity of this world? by getting so attached to things which never go with us. There's an old story we heard as children that Alexander the Great conquered many countries and he also came and conquered a lot of part of India and he looted the temples there. He killed so many people and there was a lot of gold in those temples and in those holy places. He gathered all that gold put on his caravan of horses and camels. And as he was on his way back to his own town, which is now Alexandria, on the way he fell sick. And he got such high fever 
that the doctors accompanying him said, there is no chance for reviving you. Your time, your time of death has come. He said, no, I cannot die. Because a gypsy told me when I was young that unless this earth turns into silver and the sky turns into gold, I will not die. And since that can never happen, I am going to live forever. As it happened with that serious illness, he could not even ride a horse, not there. So they lay a silver armor, the silver thing that they carry on the floor and lay him on that. And there was a golden umbrella, big umbrella put in front when he saw the silver underneath, the gold above. He said, time has come. I took it literally, it had to come like this. And then he declared, I have killed so many people, amassed so much wealth. I am willing to give it to anybody who can just help me to reach my own town. And the doctor said, there's no chance. Sorry. And he said, I created so much cruelty and gathered so much stuff. Nothing can go with me. Nothing is useful to me right now. Please, when you bury me, and put me in the coffin, keep my hand outside so that the whole world should see. Alexander the Great went empty-handed that he came and that was followed out and in his coffin the hand was left outside to show nothing goes with us. In spite of these stories, imagine how much we gather and we collect and how much we are attached to those things. Take them as useful things for use while you are here. Take them that they are just good things which you should enjoy while you are here and don't have any surplus things. Take what you need, take what you enjoy and be happy. Don't worry, be happy. That's what I heard people <laughs> saying. So therefore, you can't be happy if you're constantly worried. Some people thought that if we have a lot of money, we'll become happy. Money is the secret. I have met so many millionaires and even billionaires in my life. They are the most unhappy people I've met. It's very strange that the very thing we say is causes happiness is causing strange kind of unhappiness. Why is that? When people have a lot of money, they're worried about money. They're worried about what to do with the money, where to keep it, what to do with it. And they're never satisfied. I worked with some friends in a business. We made some money. When we made some money, we were happy. When we made more money, we were unhappy because we want to make still more money. And I noticed that we made millions. We were most unhappy because we wanted more millions than we had. This would never have arisen if we hadn't gone to that stage. What is it that we are generating something, use it and be happy? But if you say, this is mine, a billionaire, has a billion dollars sitting in a bank, which he can never use. No way. Not for living, not for enjoying, not for enjoying a happy human life. But is worried about where the investment has to be made. Where am I going to lose it? Stock market is going up, stock market is going down. All the worries are coming because of an asset you have to enjoy. Therefore, be happy with what you have. See how, how you can use what you have. That will make you more happy. There is a certain word called contentment. They say contentment is the secret of happiness, not getting more. So don't seek more, seek contentment and you'll be happy. I'm giving these little tips. I learned all these lessons in my life. 92 years is good enough to learn the lessons. So I learned all the lessons which I'm sharing with you. They say the older a man is, the wiser he grows. I'm not sure of that. <laughs> but since people believe that, therefore I come and share this with you on a holiday party. But enjoy the holiday party. I gave a long talk. That was not my intention. I said it will be an occasion for song. Too crowded for dance, but let's say it will be song. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>